Good evening, boys and girls, and welcome to Shen Plays. I'm your host, Shenner, and today we're going to start a very special game of Crusader Kings 2. Uh, this is a succession game, and as the first player, I get to choose where we play. Now, I actually already started this once, and it sucked because I was doing really well, and then I went back and I listened to it after about an hour and a half of playing, and I had my mic turned down too low. So... <laughs> Uh, that's just useless footage now. It really sucked because I actually had some fun. I was playing as uh, Haston of Nantes, and we took over all of Brittany. We won two separate wars against Francia. We were start. We conquered Cornwall. Uh, we fought the Umayyads. We conquered Sardinia and then lost it to Lotharingia. We conquered Capua. Uh, we conquered Zealand, which was one of our holy sites. So I had a lot of fun doing that. But then I went back and I listened to it. I was I was getting ready to upload it to YouTube and everything. And the sound was so bad. The the sound effects and the music were louder than my speaking. So it's just pointless. So I'm starting over. Uh, we're going to get another go at it. And instead of playing a uh, Viking character, this guy's actually a, a Viking here in France. That's, that's what was so inviting, was so enticing about it, is it's a Viking in France. And uh, after we took over Brittany, we t moved our capital to Rennes. And that turned our culture to Norman. So instead of being Norse Norse, we were Norman Norse. Norman culture with Norse religion. Anyway, we're going to start over uh, with a, a new religion, a new region, a new character. And the goal is going to be completely different. Instead of being a Viking, we're going to be a Slav. And yes, that means we're going to play as one of these minor little dorks. And we are going to be a Slav. Why don't we start on the island? There's a wonderful little island here called Rana. It's actually in a bit of a weak spot. It has no allies. It uh, does not have three holdings. It only has two. It has a castle and a church. It doesn't have a city. Uh, whereas all these other little minor states, like this one, Dolomici, actually has the best start out of all the little miners. It has four uh, little things in its county. And there's only two up here in Rana, so I figure like that's probably the weakest one. We could do a Duke. Uh, I don't really want to do Lithuania. I've seen someone already do Lithuania, and that would look pretty cool. But since I've already seen it done, and obviously I've seen Gotland done like a million times, oh, Gotland's great. We're going to do something different. So why don't we hop in here as Chief Drovid of Rana, with our wonderful flag of a green feather on a red background. Now, I could do something you know, specific for the YouTubers or whatever. And I could change my name to Shenra just to make it, you know, more me. But that's okay. This is just the first game. Now, this is just the first uh, person playing. So the uh, the way this is going to work is I'm going to play as this man, Chief Drovid of Rana. And then when he dies, I'm going to hand the game, the save file, over to the next player. And hopefully, if, if I do everything right, I'm going to be able to name my son uh, as the name of the next player. So instead of being, you know, whatever the game generated name is, it'll be the the YouTuber. And I'm not going to do any special last name or special flags or anything. He's got a cool little flag here. It's like a little red set of stairs with uh, a black line on a gold background. So that's kind of cool. Let's hop in, shall we? Now there's no set goal for this. Uh, when I was playing as uh, Nantes over here, we had an obvious first goal. We conquered Brittany. You start out with a standing army that's like 3,000 troops, and it's just like, hey, Brittany's only got 700 guys, so let's go conquer them. That's how I started. I started and became a duke like on day two. But in this case, uh, well, it's a bit different. This is going to be more difficult. So here we have Rana, and like I said, we have a castle and a church, but there's no third holding. There's no nothing. If we had picked uh, the, the neighbor down here, they already have three holdings and room for a fourth. Same thing over here, three, three. Oh, and Dolomici has four, like I told you. So, you know, I, I figured this is probably going to be the hardest start. We're not a duke, we're just a count, and uh, we have to go up from here, right? So, we are a Pomeranian Slavic. Slavic is just a type of pagan. So if we look at the religious map mode, you can see... All these people around us are all the same religion as us, Slavic pagan, which is fine. Over here in Lithuania, we have the Romuva, which is another type of pagan. And then obviously to the north, we have the Norse and the Suomanusko. So the first thing I want to do 
is take a look at how our military is. Uh, 368 dudes. And since we're just a little count, uh, we probably are going to have to go to war like early on to get more than just one county. Because, you know, living in Rana is probably not going to be the best thing for us. Uh, what I've seen happen in these games uh, is the Svitschad, Sweden, and Jaland, Denmark, these guys both tend to conquer a lot of the pagans around here. They come in here and they take over a lot of Pomerania. Uh, they take over most of Lithuania. They even fight Holmgarder for uh, Russia. So it's going to be important for us to grow a little bit so that we can stay alive. Uh, we have no relatives, no father, no son, no wife, nothing. We have zero diplomacy. <laughs> We're a thr thrifty clerk. We're humble, deceitful, slothful, and wroth. We are going to be terrible. That's perfect. Uh, our heir is our marshal. That's fine. Let's pick an ambition. Just an easy one. Let's just get married. Now let's see if we can find ourselves a nice, suitable wife. Not in prison. Not married. Ruler. I don't care. My religion. Yes. Uh, don't, eh, my culture is not that important. My religion is more. I would love to get this lady, but then we can't have babies. She's got great stats and great traits, but um, she's a little old for babies. So let's find someone else. Oh, a hunchback. That might be kind of fun. Uh, ooh. She's got good stats, but uh, nothing to marry into. I'm looking for something specific, the opposite of weak. I'm looking for strong or... Uh, quick. Here's Quick. Her marshal is terrible, but I think she will do. I don't see anyone else who comes close to her. Here's another Quick. Oh, she's pretty good. Ambitious, though. I don't know if I want an ambitious wife. Might be the end of me. She might murder us. No, it's okay. Let's go for the uh, first Quick girl. Let's see. 12, 12, 10, 19. Oh, 19! Wow, that's good. Oh, man, this has got 20 diplomacy, though. Ah, No, I can't pass up 19. Uh, the 19 intrigue. Where did she go? Well, let me just sort it by intrigue. That's going to be the fastest way to find her. 19 intrigue. Here we go. The 19 in intrigue is going to help us murder people. And she's quick, so that means she might pass quick onto our babies. Marry me. We're going to lose 100 prestige for that. That's fine. All right, what else we got to do? we got to set up our council. Let's see, 11, 15, 16, 13. That's not that bad. Mm, we probably don't even need a chancellor that's any good because the pagans get wonderful causes belly against each other. So you really don't need to do this unless you want to fight people who are not pagans. Like if you want to fight Great Moravia or if you want to fight East Francia or something, then you're going to need your chancellor to start putting claims up. But... Otherwise, everyone around you is just a, play, just a pagan, so you get wonderful cause of spellies against them. Like, let me show you. Uh, if we click on our neighbor down here, you can see the little red lines means that we have a, a, a land bridge, essentially, from the island to the shore. We can walk there. If you click on him, you can see we have a subjugation of Pomerania, cause of belly. And we're going to have this against all, uh, all other pagans around us. So if we click on uh, this guy, he's right next to us, right? Subjugation. Same thing um, over here. Nope. Oh, he's not independent. Let's click on his boss. There you go. Subjugation. Uh, and it goes by kingdom. So in this case, it's the Pomeranian kingdom. But since his land is split up into the Pomeranian kingdom along this line, his other lands are in the kingdom of Denmark. This is just de jure. If we take a look at de jure kingdoms, here's Pomerania, Poland, Denmark, East Francia, etc., etc., so we're not going to do any of that right now. I would like to save up some money. And if we need money, that means we need to use our steward to collect taxes. It says we're going to get 40% bonus to our local tax modifier. That's fantastic. And a 10% chance every year of getting a special tax collected. Uh, research cultural tax. Sure, that works. Scheme. Sure, that well. Yeah, that works. And more tax is good. I don't really need you to do anything. Why don't you make people happy up here in Jaland? Uh, I really would like to avoid getting invaded by either Yiland or, J or Jaland, because they're both, like, super strong. If take a look at this idiot. He's at, uh... Well, that's only 800... Well, 
800 troops versus my 368. That's a lot stronger than me. And Denmark's at 1,500 troops. So yeah, we're just going to try to stay happy with all those guys. They probably will declare war on us anyway, but eh, we'll try to keep them happy as long as possible. Let's put the speed up just a little bit and unpause. We should have our wife coming in soon. There we go. So we lost 100 prestige from marrying her, but we get 50 back just by clicking the button. So let's get 50 prestige back. That's fine. She hates our guts. She really hates our guts. Minus 45 for short reign. Wow. Oh, and one thing is she is not our exact religion. She's a pagan, which is our, our category of religion, shall we say. But she isn't a Slavic, and that means we're going to have a penalty during our entire marriage. Because as a pagan of an unreformed religion, we can't demand conversions. It's grayed out. So it's, we are unreformed. That means we can't demand conversions from any of our vassals or our courtiers. It's okay, then we filled our ambition. Now the smart thing here would be to go for improved diplomacy. If we do improved diplomacy, we're going to get you know events every few years to uh, possibly move this up from zero. Actually, we're not at zero. We are at three minus five. So we're actually at negative two, which is so freaking bad. Oh my goodness. That is so bad. <laughs> it's going to make our vassals hate us so much more. Take a look at our... Uh, we only have one vassal. Wow, minus 48. Slothful. We're so bad. Oh my goodness. We need to do a grand hunt. <laughs> September cannot get here any faster. We need to do a grand hunt. Uh, can we give her any honorary titles? Nope. We have no titles to give out. Could give her 20 bucks, but it would only increase her relations by 19. Because the amount of bonus you get for relations is based off of your diplomacy. And our diplomacy is zero. Hmm. Not the best leader, that's for sure. So one of the nice things about uh, this area is there, it's a lot of fragmentation. Lithuania starts out really fragmented. Poland is really fragmented. Uh, look at this. Great Moravia has already broken off. Opol, Bohemia, and Glomaxi have all, have all just broken off of Great Moravia. So they're probably fighting a war about all that. Yeah, they're fighting in, in what, Independence League? Yeah. So they're already fighting wars for that crap. I minimize the amount of work I need to do each day by delegating most of my workload to my courtier. To my courtiers, excuse me. Um, don't even have time for church? Where well, it works for me. Everyone get pissed off by us. Nope. Let's uh, do that. Don't want to piss anyone off. We already have... Look at that. Our entire court hates us except for these two ladies. Wow. Wow. Negative 65. We are so bad. Uh, my wife, Chiefess Gerder, asked me to get rid of one of my courtiers. You want to get rid of my marshal. Uh, stay out of this, woman. God. You're just a horrible person, lady. Hurry up and give me some quick children. You better give me some quick children or we're going to have words. Uh, in the meantime, we can always take a uh, concubine somewhere. Just going to look for someone who has any good traits. Why not? And when you're taking concubines, you don't have to look for... Oh, I need to pick an ambition. Oops. Uh, so the ambition we're going to go for is the best ambition. It's called Become King of Pomerania. So if we look at, for instance, this guy, and we go to Subjugation, it tells you in the fine print here, you're only allowed to do this once during your lifetime. Only once. However, if you pick the Become King ambition, then you can do it as many times as you want. So we're going to take that. Actually, I want to switch my marshal over to train troops. Oh, damn it. This little island is hard to click on. Train troops. Oh, good. No, no, no. Click, click here and train troops. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, everyone's just squished on the little island. They're all collapsing in on themselves. So, we're going to do that. So, that'll get us a little bit more troops. Went from 368 to 487. That's great. Oh, man. I don't even know what I was saying anymore. Our court hates us so much. We really... Oh, Grand Hunt, Grand Hunt, yes. going to cost us 2.2 gold. Do it. Grand Hunt. Alright, you, you made this guy happy. Denmark is happy with us. Good. Okay, Grand Hunt events. Always good stuff. Uh, the dogs have caught a scent of a boar in the forest. This is the chance for getting a mighty boar slain. I will face it with my spear. 5% chance of wounded. 
And we also get Master Hunter. Fantastic. Did we get wounded? No. Alright, the hounds were more alert this morning than I've ever seen before. Something st stupendous must be awaiting us. Uh, what are they waiting for? Let's go. Diligent, here we go. Yes. Diligent, diligent, diligent. Yes, we are now diligent instead of slothful. Oh my goodness, that is such a big help. Uh, we're still at zero diplomacy, but it's getting better. We are at zero exactly. Instead of negative two, we're now at zero. Exactly zero. Oh man, that's so awesome. Our hunting party has cornered a large bear. A small argument amongst the hunters regarding who should get the kill to the bear has nearly turned into a brawl. Just solve it already. Get Roth. We already have Roth, so I don't really care. Uh, the other option is there's a chance that we're going to get wounded and a very small chance that we'll get maimed. Um, That's okay. We already have Roth, so we'll just get Roth. There's nothing here to get rid of Roth, so I don't mind being Roth. We already have it. Ah, the day did not bring any game at all. That isn't what the other pop-up said. It has been a futile hunting trip, I guess, and my face is still burned with shame when the gamekeeper told me about deer parks. Ha <laughs> uh, ha! Not good enough. Priestess Shmishana's opinion of us lowers by 10. Or we could get ambitious. Yes, please give me ambitious. Oh my god. We are now ambitious. That one... Good, we gained 10 prestige for the hunt. That one grand hunt bumped us up from negative two to positive two diplomacy. Wow. So awesome. 2.2 gold caused all that. There's no guarantee you're going to get good things that happen on your grand hunt, but, uh, man. What is this? Hold Jarillo Festival. What is this? Celebrate the fertility god Jarillo, son of Perun, and the coming of spring with a great festival. All right. A uh, month, uh, at least August. Or before August. May to August. All right. All right, we'll try one of those. I don't know what that does. Ah, we got a tithe. Good. Good job, steward. And you improve relations with Denmark again. Yay! I'm just going to keep calling him Denmark, even though it's actually Jaland or whatever. Man, he's got good stats. Well, pretty good. Better than mine. I love being ambitious, though. That's so nice. I hope there's other events that will get rid of Roth. I don't like Roth. All right, Great Moravia has reabsorbed all of its people, things, stuff. Get this guy, do you have any allies? You do. You're allied with Diamond. Do you have any allies? Oh, yeah, yeah. You're Diamond. Yeah. Do you have any allies? Everyone has allies? Um, you? Nope. Oh, here we go. Aha! No allies. Alright, so I think we found our first two targets. We don't have enough money, though. I want to make sure we have enough money to get some mercs in case we have to. So we need probably around 150 gold. Man, how many troops can you raise? 339. And I can raise 400, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, how many troops do you have? 382. His defensive troops, his garrison is very small. I like that. Except this top level garrison is actually pretty decent. Hmm, I bet I could sneak around. I bet we could do this right now without, uh... Oh. I always knew my ambition would help me reach great places. We get free gold, just a tiny bit, but still, it's better than nothing. Alright, we're going to declare war right now, January 1st, 869. It's going to happen. Bam. He has no allies, so I'm not too concerned about that. We're going to raise our dudes. We don't really have that many, but we'll take whatever we got. Uh, yeah, we'll lead the troops. Hell yeah. See if we can get... Do we have Brave yet? I don't think we have Brave. No, we don't have Brave. Let's see if we can get Brave. That'd be fun. So I don't want to go straight at him, because... Oh. Yeah. Alright, well, it looks like we're going to have to end the video here. Uh, let me... Yeah, let me just explain this real quick. In the old gods, they added new river systems that are actually navigable by Norsemen. I think it's Norse only. It may be all pagans, but I think it's Norse only. So if we look at this, this is one sea tile. This is one sea tile. And then if we look at this river real closely, you'll see there is a river sea tile, which the Norse can get into. No other ships can get there. So this says Rhine, Rhine, Rhine. It's just the Rhine River, right? And then as you get up further along the Rhine River, it becomes just a regular river, which you can't actually send ships up. But it's cool that they added these things. 
So one way that uh, you need to worry about these things, this is the LV here, or however you pronounce it, ELV, is if we were going straight from Diamond across this river to Lakzin, or whatever this is pronounced, it's considered a great river crossing. It's like a minus 20% to your attack, to your everything. You get a minus 20 to everything if you're crossing a great river. So it's important that you get there first and make the enemy cross the river onto your face. Then you get wonderful bonuses. As a Slavic tribe, obviously that'll be even better. But anyway, so we're going to try to sneak around and go like this way. And that's what... I know it looks stupid, but that's what we're going to try. Anyway, uh, let me end it here, and I'll see you guys next time. I've been Shen, you've been you. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.